Welcome to the third video in my latest iNav series and so far we've been working on putting iNav into this ZOHD orbit wing. And if you want to watch the other videos in the series so far and how we've got to this stage, well more or less to this stage, then all of the information is covered in those videos. So in the last video we actually got the flight controller installed, we did the basic setup, we set up the receiver, plugged in the GPS and made sure that all of that stuff was working okay with the radio and we just covered very quickly the radio model as well. Now in this video we're going to be spending a little bit more time completing the setup and making sure that we're ready to go out and fly. So this time we're going to spend a bit of time installing the camera and VTX units. I've already done it in here. I'll just pop the top off. You can see it's already in here. Pull the battery out and show you how that's all gone together in a second. Then we're going to spend quite a bit of time in iNav flight itself. Uh, at the moment, again, we haven't installed any props on this thing, but we are going to install the main battery power because we're going to have to check the servos are in the right position, the midpoints are right, then they're also moving in the right direction. We're also going to do things like have a look and make sure that the failsafe is set correctly. We're also going to do things like have a play and calibrate the ESC and make sure that we have at least one flight mode set, probably pass through and maybe angle and horizon that we'll be able to use to go out and test fly the wing at the end of the video. There'll probably be one more video after this where we'll go through some of the optional settings to get it all completely dialed in because you might find when you first fly it it isn't flying completely straight and level and there might be a tweak or two that you have to do. So let me just very quickly cover the FPV pieces that I've done since we were here last time. So I'm going to pull out the battery because you can see here it all fits beautifully inside the ZOHD wing. I'm using a 3S 2200 battery and it gives fantastic center of gravity. So that is probably what I'm going to end up flying with and that should give me a ton of flight time. So the only extra things that I've actually plugged in here, and again, all this is shown in the manual for the F-35 Lightning Flight Controller for iNav, is these two cables here. One goes to the camera and the other one goes to the video transmitter. Now I, surprise price, have 3D printed a couple of parts, one to mount the FPV transmitter here and the other to mount the camera. Now the camera, I left a little bit of room so we can get to it. Um, I 3D mounted it into the front part of the canopy so that should work nice and then we have our video transmitter hopefully you can see it in there and that is coming out the top and again both the enclosures for those are 3d printed i've actually popped them on my thingiverse page so if you're following along with this build you can download them and print them too so now we've got that done we are ready to plug back into inar flight the only thing I would say here is just as one last protection, if you haven't plugged it into the mains yet, pop an ohm meter across the two pins that's part of the main battery connector that you've got plugged into the flight controller. Make sure there's no dead shorts in there before you plug the power in for the first time. Uh, I have already done that and it's okay here. To be honest, if you haven't been messing around and taking the case off and soldering stuff, you probably don't have to worry about that anyway. But as I did, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to fly my wasn't going to fry my flight controller when I plugged it in. So let's plug it in and let's have a look at the couple of things we need to do in INA flight to get ready to go and fly this. Now the process we're going to follow is the one that's documented in the iNav wiki. So if you want to kind of jump ahead, you can either watch the previous series on iNav that I did about a year ago, or you can read the wiki. The process itself is pretty much the same from here on in. First thing we need to do is to connect to iNav and just confirm that the sticks on the radio are all moving the right way. Again, we want no mixing on the radio, even if we're using a V-tail or something like a wing. And by moving the sticks to the top right hand corner, we should see all of the values use go to their maximum position. Again, just double check that it's not going above 2000 or below 1000 and that the middle channel values for the aileron elevator and rudder are settling at 1500. Once we've got that bit done, then the next thing is to set up the servos. Now we need to enable the servo output, so make sure again that the prop isn't installed. And once we have enabled that in the configurator tab, then we should hear the servos click into life. Now normally the way this works is you go into the servo tab, you enable the live output so that you can control them directly and you move the midpoint to put each of the servos at 90 degrees. However, I was having a real problem with this and it, every time I did it the servos would kind of go dead and I'd have to reboot the flight controller to get it working. 
Now, after playing with this for a good 20 minutes and scratching my head and trying to make sure it was something that I wasn't doing wrong, I went and Googled the problem and found it documented in the wiki. So at the moment, I'm using 1.9.2 of the configurator, and there is a problem in there that I'm going to have to wait to be fixed till I can get a bit further on. Now, I can kind of get around this by constantly rebooting the flight controller and getting kind of one operation done before it resets the servos, but that's not going to be a great demo. So at this point, I'm going to have to put the project to one side and come back to it when the next version of the configurator is released that has the problem fixed. And hopefully this is just an example of the fact that sometimes, you know, these builds don't go exactly according to plan and that use of Google and the issues in places like GitHub can show you if it's something that you're doing or if it's something that other people have found too. So welcome back. Here we are four weeks after that initial clip and now we have version 1.9.3 of the configurator that fixed the servo thing. So all I've done between that last clip and this one, I've just disconnected the rods that connect the servos to the outputs just so I can move everything around. What we're going to do in this bit now is go through all the standard basic settings that I would do before a first test flight. This isn't the complete setup, this is just what I like to do to make sure that everything is safe and is going to work for our first flight out of the field. So the first thing we're going to do is to plug this little fella in. And we're also then plug it into the computer and there we are we can now see it all moving and if I move the controls around there's the servos moving and everything else so that looks good so first thing we're going to do is set up the servos so very briefly let me just remind you in the receiver tab if we move the sticks to the top right hand corner all the values should be maximum bottom left hand corner whoop, all the values should be minimum that's the way it needs to be. We shouldn't be reversing anything else in the radio apart from to make sure that that's the way the radio appears in iNav. Okay, I've also done a couple of other things. I've got a switch for set the, setting the mode. I've got a switch for arming. And I've also got another switch as well, which is going to be used for doing something called servo trim in this first flight. But let's very quickly go into the servos and do that first. So ideally what you want to do is set up all the servos exactly as you normally would with a radio with iNav. And what I mean by that is you want the servos to be at 90 degrees. We also want to limit the movement and make sure they're moving in the right direction. So this is the tab that we're going to use. We're going to enable live mode. And then what you need to do, first of all, I would change the middle value. So you can see here that servos three and four on a wing. Change the middle value so that the servo horn is exactly at 90 degrees. If you find that the servos are moving in the wrong direction, one of mine was, then I've just changed the rate from plus 100% to minus 100% to reverse the movement. If you find the servos moving too much, you can reduce the rate, or if you want to be more fine control, then you can increase the minimum and decrease the maximum to make sure that nothing is binding on your model. Okay, now we've got that bit done, then turn live mode off. Next thing I do is set up the modes tab. So let's jump into modes. I'd recommend that you use the arming switch method on a fixed wing. So I've got an arming switch there. Channel six is mine. And in the high position, it arms the quad. So let me just go over there. There we go, it's armed. We could saw the little exclamation mark briefly light up yellow at the top. There it is again. So that means everything's happy. I tend to have my mode switch in the lowest position in manual, middle position in angle, top position in horizon mode. So if I just zoom down here, you'll find there's manual mode. And we need manual mode because we want to trim the plane so that if all else fails and iNav has a bit of a dicky fit, then we can flick into manual mode and take direct control, well, as direct as we can, with an iNav flight controller in place so we can fly at home. The other control that I've gotten here is something called servo auto trim, which is this extra one that we've got down here at the bottom. If I flick the switch, that will enable servo auto trim. And the way we're going to use that is in the first flight is we're going to fly straight and level uh, and then hold that switch in position for a couple of seconds. And it will teach iNav 
what the servo positions needs to be in manual mode for straight and level flight. And that's slightly different from doing the, the, the board alignment in angle, but I'll cover that in a second. So those are the modes I'd recommend that gives us the ability to test out manual mode and also one of the stabilized modes. Make sure we have an arming switch and also I'd recommend have something set for servo auto trim. Probably only going to use it once, but once it's done we should be good. Next thing to do then is talk about failsafe. Now interestingly, the switch that I'm using here for the servo auto trim is a two position switch. So it will never go into the 50% position. So if I just show you what that looks like. So in receiver tab, it's either off or it's on. Channel 8 is off or on. It never goes to 1500. If I turn the radio off, you'll see that channel 6, 7 and 8 are set on this radio to go to the middle channel position which is 1500. Now I can use that by setting up the failsafe mode on channel 8 for that middle position. So if I go into modes and show you what failsafe looks like. So failsafe is on channel 8 so if that switch ever goes into the middle position then we have a failsafe condition and we can test if that's actually working. Watch the little parachute at the top. If I turn the radio off again The little red parachute goes red, the flight controller knows it's in failsafe mode. So in that's the case, we can set up failsafe. So you can do it one of two ways. Apologies for the radio, keep talking. I do have lots of uh, verbal communication. Because if I'm flying FPV uh, on a wing like this, I like the radio to let me know what's going on. The two ways you can do this is either set the receiver to either send no pulses or to send a PWM pulse outside of these valid pulse range settings, so i.e. in this case below 885 and above 2115, or you can set it up like we've done then actually activate the failsafe as well. And I've got mine set to return to home so it should fly back to me. Now I'm going to test the GPS functions and that will be a whole bit in a little while but this is just hopefully it's going to come back to me if there's a bit of a hiccup. Next thing we can do is calibrate the ESC uh, because we know it's armed and it's going to work. It's also a great way to just confirm everything's going to be okay. We'll go into the motors tab exactly the same as we would in something like beta flight. Turn on the motor test. Make sure your prop isn't on. The battery isn't connected. Slide the master up to the very top plug in the battery and then immediately slide the master down to the bottom position and that will calibrate the ESC in here as well so that INAV has maximum control of the full throttle range. Next thing we need to do is we need to replace some default values. Now there's loads of values in here that's worthwhile having a look at and we can change to alter the way that INAV is going to perform. So if we look at the fixed wing stuff, here are all the fixed wing settings and in the INAV documentation you can figure it out because we've used one of the presets, a lot of these are already set. There's also the nav stuff as well. There's all the nav pieces. Now in the documentation, it has a recommended set of changes. I do wish that iNav set those automatically. Uh, some of them are choices, but I think things like the maximum angles are a very clever basic thing to do. So what I've done, just for simplicity, I've cheated, I've copied the things that I want to change into this file, and these are only the things that are in that document we've just looked at. Copy, paste, hit enter, here we go, and we'll say save, hit enter, and there's all of those pieces done as well. Okay, we are nearly at the end of the setup bit, ready for our first flight. Last couple of things that we need to do. Let me just move the radio out of the way to show you these bits. You'll notice that on the screen uh, it looks like the craft is actually pointing down. If I lift the front up so that it's level, you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm increasing the angle of the model. And that's because most flying wings will actually be slightly nose up when they're flying along and it'll be in the range of about 10 degrees, every particular wing's different. Now because of that, I have actually set the an offset for the flight controller so that the wing will naturally want to fly in that attitude so it shouldn't lose height. Again, this is a guess, but it's a, it's a rough guess. It should be more or less there, but again, it's something we can test for on our first test flight. So if I show you in configuration tab, 
what I've done is I've changed the board alignment. If you remember, we did 270 degrees because I've mounted the flight controller, turned around from how it is supposed to go in by default. One of the vagaries of that now means that unfortunately I do need to adjust the roll degrees to get the 10 degree up tilt. Normally, if I hadn't rotated it, I'd be putting the 10 degrees on the pitch, which is actually the axis I'm interested in. Um, the way that this works, I guess it's a, a feature and, or a bug, is that I've had to put it on the other axis. Um, again, I might have to change that when we fly. The result is, what it means is that when the wing is flying level, it should be angled slightly up. I probably find that 10 degrees is slightly too much, but we will figure that out. Very last thing to do is going to be put the wings back on and to connect all of the control rods into the servos. I'm going to align all of the control surfaces perfectly with the wing and tighten everything up. That'll do that piece. And then the last things I would do is just double check in the screen that the craft moves exactly the right way, that you haven't got the board alignment the wrong way around or any of that wackiness. And when everything's back together, just do a standard high five test to make sure that all the controls are working in the right direction and you haven't got any of the outputs reversed. Again, if you have got them reversed, just go into the servo tab and change the polarity on the right hand side and that will reverse the servo that you're interested in. Okay, let me just put this thing together and join me for the next video in the series where what we're going to do is take this to the field. We'll fly it. First of all, we'll fly it in manual mode. We'll do the servo trim thing so that the INAV system knows where the wing control surfaces need to be for straight and level flight in manual mode. And that means that I've always got that to go back to if something weird happens. And then we'll also flick it into angle or horizon and we'll see how it performs. And we'll also check that that little 10 degree up tilt angle is there or thereabouts because it's as it's flying around, uh, I'll be able to see whether or not it's losing or gaining height at cruising throttle. So join me in that video where we actually get out in the sunshine. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless 360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.